9 to 9 math is a fun way to review your math facts, both addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and unit conversion. Constantly reviewing it is an excellent practice in math in order to get a subject. The problem is, is that people, you don't want to bore kids with worksheets. So often kids, when they think they've mastered a skill, put it aside and don't continue to review it. But by spending five minutes in the class or five minutes once a week reviewing it, you keep those ideas fresh in their heads and their scores improve because they don't forget what they have learned earlier in the year. It's not boring. It's, uh, they like the competitiveness. They like uh, seeing who goes faster that, especially if they're competing against me, the teacher, who can, who can beat me in class. It's always a fun. <laughs> it's also a fun way to interact with their parents and get their parents involved with reviewing math with them since sometimes parents aren't as positive about math as other subjects. Math scares people. Mm -hmm. Math is something that can intimidate people and it shouldn't intimidate people. Um, we all know math, but people often don't find math fun. And mm -hmm. when things aren't fun, they get turned off and they don't want to do it and say, oh, I can use a calculator, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And they'll turn it away. But when you make something fun, it's everybody likes to do it. And they realize, oh, I do know this. And you do know it, it's common knowledge. Especially with the conversion units, we learn the you learn it in first grade, you learn it in second grade, you learn it in third grade, and then you come up into the middle school years and the high school years, and although all the kids know how many grams are in a kilogram, they forget how to do it quickly. They're looking it up. Having it as a review, it's much faster for them, and they make, they make less silly mistakes on their labs. So that one's also really a positive thing, and especially when you start doing areas and volumes, and being able to convert things uh, from meters to meters squared to meters cubed, it really helps people get things on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you have a child that's going from two different areas of the world where you're using standard English units to metric units, it's a wonderful way to help kids learn the conversion because sometimes you've grown up in one area and you're not familiar with the system of the other area. So that's actually really nice. They have both systems up there. We have been practicing unit conversions in our physics class and the kids really, um, they thought at first, you know, oh, we don't need to do this. And when they saw their own scores, they realized that it has been a while since they have reviewed it. And they're not no longer looking at the front of a reference table. They're now getting it much faster and they're finding that they're having less problems in class quickly converting, mm -hmm. saving them time, and then they can focus on what's really important rather than how to go from grams to kilograms, meters to uh, centimeters to meters, going into the metric system. Does this answer make sense? Um, which is also good, especially when you're doing 2D and 3D shapes. Both in, um, so that has been really helpful. The ones that are taking the SATs, they've asked. The 10th and 11th graders asked if once a week we can keep practicing because this section they're mm -hmm. incredibly nervous about when you take kids who are now 15 and well they're 16 and above and they're going to take a test mm -hmm. that is that's going to determine where they're going to go for higher education and they've been being able to use calculators for the last six years of their life in every class and then you suddenly tell them hi you're going to take a test it's going to be one of the most important tests in your life by the way, you can't use a calculator. That's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress. And so to practice it, when we go over and we do practice tests in the practice SAT review, they get upset if they make poor mistakes, on like little mistakes on um, just, uh, oh my gosh, that, that's how we multiply it, that's how we add it. So by practicing the, it, it, seems, it seems odd that 10th and 11th graders want to practice their addition, subtraction, multiplication, division facts, but they said if we keep practicing it, they feel more confident that they can do this section of the test without their calculator because they are now doing all mental math. It's mental math facts. Yes, they still have to know the rest of the stuff, but they don't have, they're feeling more confident without their calculators. So actually, they're the ones who want to use it the most. It's, it's getting ready for the SAT and it's just being able to say that I can do mental math. 
Because mm-hmm. today you don't do mental math. You're so used to pulling out your phone mm-hmm. and using, I can just calculate it on my phone. Mm-hmm. I have a calculator on my phone. Um, I don't need it. And you see adults in the street. They'll come up, they're gonna, they'll take out, they'll go to the app. It's, it comes with every phone. It's a guaranteed app. You don't do mental math anymore. So to have something fun where they're going to review mental math and we make it a contest and we make it who gets to be the top person in the class. Um, I'm not giving out free prizes or anything like that. It's the, it's the pride that they, they're moving up. They're mm-hmm. moving up and, oh, I, I did better than I did last week. And it's their own goal so they can know the mental math. So they, can, they have that confidence going into taking the SAT or taking um, your British um, A-levels or your O-levels because there are sections of every one of these national exams worldwide that require you a no calculator section. Um, and you should be able to do stuff mental math. It's it's there. Also, you can also use it on your subject tests for um, your uh, SAT twos. Uh, the problems that they give you, you being one of the multiple choice. If you know your mental math, you can sit there and easily go yes. Obviously, C is the right answer, and it's it takes a whole relief off of your shoulder if you can do mental math. Kids who cannot do mental math, you see them. They give you scratch papers on all these exams. You see them hurriedly trying to be able to fix this while watching the clock tick, 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 tick in the background. Because remember, on these exams, you get points for getting it right, and then there's a deduction for getting it wrong. So if you're very nervous about your math, that even gives a child more anxiety. So if you can relieve that anxiety, it's the child goes in with confidence, and that's what they need when they're taking the test. Because these kids all... All kids know the information. It's just whether they can relay it to you. And if this is a tool that can help you, use it. Because that's the important part in life, is to use tools.